Section 10.1, Sequence, Series, and Sigma Notation. A sequence is an ordered list of numbers, such as 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. Each number is known as a term. A sub 1 is the first term. In this case, A sub 1 is 2. And then we could say A sub 2 is equal to 4, and so on. A sub 3 is 6. A finite sequence contains a finite number of terms. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. Sequence stops. It's finite. Infinite sequence contains an infinite number of terms, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, and then it goes on forever. A sequence can be explicitly defined using an explicit formula. An example, an explicit formula for an arithmetic sequence. A sub n equals a sub 1 plus n minus 1d. It's kind of a rule to find any term you want. We could find the fifth term of this sequence right here. We we'd just plug 5 in for n. And so we'd have 3 plus 16, the fifth term would be 19. Example 1, find terms of sequences. Find the next four terms of the sequence when we have 2, 7, 12, 17. We keep adding on 5 every time, so this will be 22, and then 27, 32, and 37. Letter B, find the next four terms of the sequence. We have 2, 5, 10, 17. It would appear that we are adding 3, and then 5, and then 7, and then probably 10, but this sequence, or this, uh, yeah, this sequence is meant more to be uh, perfect squares and then plus 1. For example, 1 squared plus 1, 2 squared plus 1, 3 squared plus 1. This would be 4 squared plus 1, 5 squared plus 1 would be 26, 6 squared plus 1 would be 37, uh, then we'd have 50 and 65. Find the first four terms of the sequence given by uh, this explicit formula. So a sub 1 would be 2 times 1 times negative 1 to the n, which would be negative 2. And then a sub 2 would be positive 4. a sub 3 would be negative 6. And then uh, a sub 4 would be a positive 8. Sequences can also be defined recursively. Recursively defined sequences give one or more of the first few terms and then define the terms that follow using those previous terms. The formula defining the nth term of the sequence is called the recursive formula or a recurrence relation. The most famous of these is the Fibonacci sequence. If we let a sub 1 equal 1 and a sub 2 equal 1, uh, then the next term would be the two previous before this term and then the one right before it and those added together. So the sequence is 1, 1, and then add those two together, 2, add these two together, 3, add these two together, 5, and so on, 8, and uh, that goes on forever. Example 2, recursively defined sequences. Find the fifth term of the recursively defined sequence where n is greater than or equal to 2. So we're going to start with a sub 1 is 1, and then a sub n is the, one, the term before this one, plus 2 times n minus 1. a sub 2 is equal to the 1 before it, so 1 plus 2 times 2 minus 1. So 5 minus 1 is 4. And then a sub 3, we take the 1 before this one, which is 4, plus 2 times 3 minus 1. That's uh, 10 minus 1 is 9. a sub 4 is 9 plus 2 times 4 minus 1. That's going to be 17 minus 1, that's 16. a sub 5 is equal to 16 plus 2 times 5 minus 1. And that's going to be 26 minus 1. The fifth term is uh, 25. In lesson 1, 3, you examine the end behavior of the graphs of functions. You learn that as the domains of some functions approach infinity, the ranges approach a unique number called a limit. As a function, an infinite sequence may also have a limit. If a sequence has a limit such that the terms approach a unique number, then it is said to converge. If not, the sequence is said to diverge. So if we can get the sequence values to level off, then we have a limit. If they shoot up to infinity, if they shoot down to negative infinity, or if they bounce back and forth positive, negative, uh, but then they could approach zero doing that, but if they start widening out, so they go positive, negative, 
a higher positive, a lower negative, a higher positive, a lower negative, that's diverging. This is converging. And if it's shooting off to infinity or negative infinity, that's diverging. Example 4, Convergent and Divergent Sequences. Determine whether each sequence is convergent or divergent. Here we have letter A. A sub n equals negative 3n plus 12. Now we can grab, graph this on our calculator. You can put your calculator into sequential mode. And instead of connected, you can make it dotted. This is in mode. And then when you hit y equals, uh, we put negative 3n plus 12 into the u of n. When we do that, we see this line, except we only get values when we plug in uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, the integers. And we see that this line is not leveling off. It's not leveling off to a value. It just keeps going down infinitely. This uh, sequence diverges. Let's look at letter B. This is a recursive formula, so we won't be able to graph this one. Let's do this by hand. We have a sub 1 is 36 a sub 2, the second term, uh, we take the first term, multiply by negative 1 half. That's negative 18. And then a sub 3 is negative 9. Actually, it's going to be positive 9. Uh, a sub 4 is going to be negative uh, 9 halves. And then a sub 5 is positive uh, 9 fourths. And then this fraction is going to be getting smaller and smaller and smaller. So this uh, sequence is converging to zero. This converges. With letter C, we can go back to the calculator. Uh, we can go mode. Let's see, let's turn it on first. Mode, we want sequential and dotted, or sequence. Uh, and then let's plug this into y equals. Uh, we have it right here. Two parentheses. We have negative one to the n times n on top. And then we have 4n plus 1 uh, in, in the denominator. Let's go to the window. Uh, the x minimum, we want 0. We're going to go to 10. And then we want our y minimum to be negative uh, 0.25 and our y maximum to be 0.25. And then we can have the scale, if you want, at 0.25. And when we graph this, we see that the function is leveling off to negative 1 fourth and leveling off to positive 1 fourth. Now, even though it's leveling off, it can't level off to two values and be considered convergent. So this one diverges. Series. A series is the indicated sum of all terms of a sequence. Like sequences, series can be finite or infinite. A finite series is the indicated sum of all terms of a finite sequence. And an infinite series is the indicated sum of all terms of an infinite sequence. So a finite sequence would be 1, 3, 5, 7, 9. The series is, you just add up the terms. An infinite, 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, keep on going. The series would be 1 plus 3 plus 5 plus 7, keep on going forever. The sum of the first n terms of a series is called the nth partial sum and is denoted S sub n. The nth partial sum of any series can be found by calculating each term up to the nth term and then finding the sum of those terms. So what does that mean? If I wanted to take this series right here and find the second partial sum, that's just 1 plus 3. That's the first two terms uh, added. And so we have uh, 4. The third partial sum would be 1 plus 3 plus 5. 3 plus 1 is 4, plus 5 is 9, and so on. The nth partial sum. Find the fourth partial sum of a sub n equals negative 2 to the n plus 3. Well, we need the terms. a sub 1 would be, let's see, negative 2 plus 3, that's 1. a sub 2 would be negative 2 squared, that's 4 plus 3, that's 7. a sub 3 would be negative 8 plus 3, that's negative 5. And a sub 4 would be 16 plus 3, that's 19. Now, let's see, that would be, yeah, that's going to be 1, very good. Uh, so the fourth partial sum is 1 plus 7 minus 5 plus 19. So we have 8 minus 5, that's 3 plus 19, we have 22. Let's find the third partial sum of this one. We have uh, a sub 1 is 4 tenths, a sub 2 is equal to 4 over 100, and then a sub 3 is equal to 4 over 
1,000. So now we need common denominator. Uh, so we have, uh, let's see, we've got to multiply by 100 here. So we get 400 over 1,000. Uh, plus, I need to multiply by uh, 10 here, plus 40 over 1,000, and then plus 4 over 1,000. So here's the third partial sum. We have 444 over 1,000. Since an infinite series does not have a finite number of terms, you may assume that an infinite series has no sum s. This is true for the series below. If we have this infinite sequence that produces this infinite series, and the sequence of first four partial sums would be 1, 5, 12, and 22. And this uh, doesn't level off. It's shooting off to infinity. So this doesn't have a sum. However, some infinite series do have sums. For an infinite series to have a fixed sum s, the infinite sequence associated with this series must converge to zero. Notice the sequence of partial sums in the infinite series below appears to approach a sum of 0.1 repeating or 1 ninth. Now what they're saying is look how the, we have this sequence and uh, the sequence is getting smaller and smaller. It's approaching zero. That's the only way the series is going to converge is if you add terms that get smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. The sequence of first three partial sums, so the partial sums are converging to point one repeating. We will take a closer look at sums of infinite sequences in lesson 10.3. Series are often more conveniently noted using the uppercase Greek letter sigma. A series written using this letter is said to be expressed using summation notation or sigma notation. For any sequence, a sub 1, a sub 2, a sub 3, a sub 4, the sum of the first k terms is denoted by the sigma notation a sub n. Where n is the index of summation, k is the upper bound of summation, and 1 is the lower bound of summation. Uh, we'll cover that. We'll talk about that. In this notation, the lower bound indicates where to begin summing the terms of sequence, and the upper bound indicates where to end the sum. If the upper bound is given as infinity, the sigma notation represents an infinite series. So if you have an infinity up here of a sub n, that means now we have an infinite series, and that goes on forever. Find each sum. We want to sum up 4n minus 3 for n equals 1 to 5, which means we're going to plug in 1, then 2, then 3, then 4, then 5. So let's plug in 1. 4 minus 3 is 1. And then when we plug in 2, we get 8 minus 3 is 5. Plug in 3, we get 12 minus 3 is 9. Uh, 4 minus 3, that's 16 minus 3, that's 13. And 20 minus 3 is 17. So we get 6, 15, 28, let's see, 28 and 17, uh, 2, 3, 4, 45 is the sum. Let's plug in 1. We get 6 minus 3 is 3, so we get 3 halves. And then plus 2 is 12 minus 3 is 9 halves. Uh, and then 4 is 24 minus 3, that's 21 halves. Uh, so that's 1, oh, mm. dang it, don't plug in 1. In letter B, we have n equals 3 to 7. So now rather than starting with 1, we're going to start with 3. 18 minus 3 is 15, so we have 15 halves. 4 is 24, minus 3 is 21 halves. Uh, 5 is 30, minus 3 is 27 halves. Well, that's a 7. Uh, that's 3, 4, 5. We need 6 and 7. So 36 minus 3 is 33 halves. And finally, we have 42 minus 3, that's 29 halves. Uh, let's see, 15 and 21, that's 36, and 27 is 63. Uh, we have 96, and 29 is 15, carry the 1. 125 over 2 is the sum for this problem.